Good evening and welcome to CIS 205 Technology and Integration Support. Uh, this webinar tonight will be about CompTIA's A-plus exam 22801, which is their first exam, and it's objective 1.1 1 .1 is what we're going to, going to be covering tonight. I thought I'd start off with something that I like to say, and you want to know what? I find it's really true in this, doing this. Uh, don't get too complicated. Uh, we're not dealing with rocket science here. We are only dealing with a little bit of computer science. And it looks like I need to fix that slide. Okay, so tonight I'm going to give you an introduction to the BIOS, uh, some information on BIOS component information, BIOS configuration, and monitoring your PC's health through the BIOS. So we're going to start with the introduction to BIOS. So <clears throat> what is the BIOS? Well, it's you can also call it firmware. Uh, without the BIOS, your computer does not start. It is the base level programming that allows the computer to come up. Uh, BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System, and that's what it is. It is the most basic of programs. Uh, it establishes the initial behavior of your hardware, uh, and it is stored in read-only memory. Good evening, Craig. Um, part of what that means is that it is pers persistent. It will survive even a power loss. And it currently is uh, easily reprogrammable. Back in the day, it was actually it was actually programmed into a chip, hard coded into a chip. And if you wanted to change your BIOS, you actually had to take the chip out of the computer and put it into a handy dandy nifty machine that that bathed it in ultraviolet light and then you could reprogram it. So you had to flash it with ultraviolet light to make it to, to get a new program into it. And that's actually where the term flashing a BIOS or flashing your firmware comes from, is from that good old days. Thankfully it's a whole lot easier now. Um, I do recommend care and caution. When you are thinking about updating your BIOS, follow the instructions exactly, because if you mess it up, now as you got is a pretty big paperweight. So what does the BIOS do? Well, it controls the firmware. There we go. I think I've said that so many times. Um, and it actually sets what components can be installed into the computer. And it also points the the hardware to where the master boot record can be found. So it'll point towards the primary uh, boot, which should be where your master boot record is found. They are updatable. Uh, like I said, it's a whole lot easier nowadays. So it's fairly automated. Uh, Back in the day, not so much. Uh, one of my computers back in, well, I don't remember how far long ago it was, but quite a while ago, uh, when I first tried to flash the BIOS, I screwed up and ended up having to buy a new motherboard because I did, could not recover and reinstall the BIOS that I blew out of it. So now let's talk about the component information about BIOS. Okay, so the BIOS actually helps determine the maximum amount of RAM that you can put into the system. Uh, you'll see a lot of motherboards that have uh, maximum amounts of RAM that are actually less than what can be handled by the operating system. Uh, part of that circuitry, part of that is controlled by the BIOS. 
the BIOS also controls how the RAM operates. And you can increase the performance of your RAM, but that also tends to decrease the stability of the platform. Uh, hard drives. The BIOS is how your computer recognizes which hard drives are present. And if you have the right motherboard and BIOS, it'll actually have RAID capabilities built right into it. Uh, optical drives. BIOS recognizes them, uh, sets it up so that they can be seen by the operating system. Now let's move on to CP video processing unit. Uh, the BIOS, again, kind of like with RAM, it will help determine which CPUs can be utilized in or on that motherboard. Uh, the socket, the pin counts and whatnot help as well. Actually, that's a major factor. But without the right programming, it doesn't matter what it is, it won't work without the BIOS. You can also tweak the CPU settings and improve the performance of your CPU. Uh, but anytime you, you tweak uh, CPU or RAM to perform faster, beyond their their range called overclocking, which I'm sure most of you know, you can get some pretty good performance gains, but again, that is at the cost of stability. Uh, there is a whole bunch of information out there on overclocking uh, CPUs and RAM. Have at it. I've never been that much interested in it, so I can't help you too much. So now let's move on to to BIOS configuration. And we're going to start here. Usually when you start up your computer, you go through a post screen. screen. And if you watch really carefully at the bottom of the screen, usually, there is a, uh, a little blurb that tells you how to enter setup. Entering that setup is entering BIOS. A lot of the times, it is the delete key I've seen it be the F2 key. I've seen it be a combination of keystrokes. It all depends upon whose BIOS it is. And what we have here on the screen is actually a screenshot of a very basic BIOS that is included in Windows 7 if you want to run a virtual machine. Uh, this is taken from my laptop. This particular BIOS is manufactured by AMI. It, if you look closely, you may or may not be able to read it, but it actually looks like the name of it is AMI BIOS. No, that's not true. It's actually AMI BIOS. So what does the BIOS configuration allow you to do? Well, boot sequence. You can tell the PC where to look for the master boot record. Uh, usually, you will default it, default to uh, the master hard drive or the first primary hard drive, but you can tell it to look on the CD, uh, CD, look at the optical drive first. You can tell it to look at the um, USB, look for a USB master boot record first. You can even tell it with the right BIOS to, to look on the network. Uh, that's a little bit more advanced, but a lot of enterprise, uh, enterprise level IT setups, when you boot up a PC, it actually downloads its operating system from the network. Uh, you can enable and disable devices from the BIOS. So if you only want one of your SATA connections to be functional, I, some BIOSes allow you to do that. Some BIOSes allow you to disable USB. You can also set uh, base level security in the BIOS. And if you're smart, you'll put a password on your BIOS so that somebody else just can't come in and redo it, even though there are ways around that. Uh, 
You also set the, the base time, date and time in the BIOS. That's how your computer knows what day it is, and that's because of the BIOS. And then it keeps current using the CMOS, uh, which isn't really CMOS anymore, but that's what we call it, which is just essentially a battery that keeps a little trickle of power going to keep the date and time current. In, in the BIOS, you can set your clock speed. And the clock speed is the speed at which the CPU operates. And what do we mean by clock speed? Well, it's set by an oscillating crystal. It goes tick, tock, tick, tock. And your CPU runs or matches its cycles of operation to that crystal. So you can tweak the frequency at which that crystal oscillates or goes tick-tock. And you can make it go faster, and your CPU will try and match the clock cycle. Actually, it'll be a multiplier of the clock, but that's neither here nor there. The faster, it, the, faster the frequency, the faster the clock cycle, the more power supposed power and throughput that you can do. So like I said earlier, you push it too hard, you really affect your st stability. And another issue is, is the harder you make that CPU work, the hotter it runs, the more cooling you're going to need. That, by the way, is why a lot of gamers use water-cooled system or liquid-cooled systems is because they're overclocking their uh, CPUs and RAM and or they use the liquid cooling to combat the heat buildup. Uh, most modern BIOSes have virtualization support, thank goodness. Uh, kind of interesting, my laptop has it, uh, but my desktop does not, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, I think I would, oh, I did. There's BIOS security that you can configure. Uh, that also some BIOSes will allow you to do whole drive encryption. Uh, a lot of them now come with a TPM chip, and what that does is that means, that what the TPM chip does is that kind of locks that configuration to the operating system that's present. Another thing that can be enabled in a lot of BIOS systems, especially on laptops and tablets, is low jack for computers. Uh, that is enabled in the BIOS. It's usually turned off by default. You got to call low jack, you got to buy the license, and then they will give you the program key to unlock it. The advantage there, though, is, is if your laptop or tablet gets stolen or you leave it someplace, you call them up, and as long as it's got power, uh, and on a network, which most of them are nowadays, uh, LoJack can tell you where it is. Kind of a cool deal. Never have had to use it myself. And um, actually, I've only ever had one computer where the LoJack was turned on. It wasn't even mine. It was a company I was working for. So uh, let's move into monitoring. Well, the BIOS will help you monitor the health of your PC. How does it do that? Well, it can tell you the temperature inside your case. It can tell you the temperature of your CPU. Some of them can tell you the temperature of your RAM. They have sensors built into a lot of motherboards. Usually, usually when they do that, then your BIOS will help you monitor, to monitor those. Now I'm having problems speaking, and I apologize for that. You can also see how fast your fans are spinning, case fans and CPU fans. A lot of BIOSes will allow you to configure uh, fan speed so that when certain temperature thresholds are crossed, the fan speed picks up. And as the temperature drops below those fan speeds, the aren't fan speeds, temperature thresholds, the fan speeds will decrease. 
it's actually a cool way to do it, especially if you're in an environment that is uh, noise sensitive. I've heard some PCs that have sounded like planes taking off, even when they're just sitting there idling. A lot of those are kind of wish they'd have a few less bands. Uh, some, some BIOSes have intrusion detection and notification. They actually will put a, um, I'd call it a trip switch. That's usually a pin button on the case. Somebody opens up the case, the pin switch is tripped, BIOS is notified. The next time you boot up, you receive a notification that somebody's been in the case. Uh, kind of a nifty thing, particularly if you are security conscious. Uh, voltage, you can find out what your voltages are. And some BIOSes, you can actually tweak the voltage, raise it up, raise it down by increments. Uh, that's one of the ways that you increase the clock cycle. Uh, and like I said before, you raise it too high, you increase the performance, but you reduce your stability. Uh, sometimes it's a tight rope to walk. Uh, then you have your bus speeds. You can actually see what your system bus is running. Uh, that is the throughput through the channels. And some BIOSes will allow you to tweak those a little bit, make some fine, fine adjustments. Uh, usually, though, I would stay away from those. So here we are. We're at the end. Do we have any questions on BIOS? Are you going to do stuff with the recording? You record it? Okay. I'm sorry, Craig. I did not hear that. Um, are you going to? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Um, are you going to record our questions? Um, if they concern BIOS, yes. If they don't concern BIOS, wait a moment, and I'm going to turn off the recording. I like to have a question about BIOS, so I think it would be... Or if you want to wait... Um, how about you? I think it's called UEL. It's a graphical interface. It's now for the BIOS setup programs. Um, I'm seeing that more and more money. Um, I'm going to need you... Stop, stop one second, Craig. Craig, I need you to speak up. Your, your mic's a little bit off this evening. Um, Donna, this particular BIOS doesn't have the, the bus speed on it. Uh, can you hear me now? That's a little bit better. Okay, I guess I just have to, uh, I, I did another video conference and I didn't have any trouble. Um, oh, wait. Yeah, it was turned down. I saw it. Okay. Um, how about, I think it's called UEL, which is a uh, graphical interface now for BIOSes. I'm seeing more uh, new motherboards now. They don't have this old AMI BIOS, big display type of BIOS set up now. They're using a graphical interface. At least that's my MSI motherboards I get now. Um, correct. The BIOS, BIOSes have been improving by leaps and bounds in their. Um, presentation and tweakability. Uh, unfortunately for you all, CompTIA tends to lag behind. So you're still dealing with the old AMI and Phoenix and Award BIOSes. Uh, if, you haven't, if you haven't seen it, if you've got a fairly new computer or PC, I would recommend that you take a look at your BIOS. Uh, feel free to play around with it a little bit. Just make sure that you know what you change. And if all else fails, they usually have a way to, to go back to the default setting. So at this point in time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the recording and then open the floor to take any more questions.